Hey, in this video, we'll add a saving function to our Fabric.js based canvas application. This will allow your users to export a design in JSON format and re upload it back to the canvas whenever needed. You can also use the same method to auto save data in local storage. You will learn how to include custom extended object properties in the save, because by default, Fabric.js does not support them. Let's start by creating a new component file, file export.js, where at the top we import React. Now we'll define a React component called file export. We'll also pass the canvas prop from the main application component so we can read the canvas object and save it. Close the component and export it so other parts of your application can use it. Let's create our first constant that will export our canvas. Export canvas is a function for saving the canvas state. First, we check if there's no canvas passed in. Stop here to avoid errors later on. Now, we have to convert everything on the Fabric.js canvas, shapes, text, colors, positions into a plain JavaScript object, basically a snapshot of your canvas. Turn the JSON object into a string with JSON stringify. Then, we'll wrap it inside a blob which represents file-like data in the memory of your application. The blob type is application JSON, so the browser knows it's JSON. Now, we can create a temporary link in the memory by defining a link constant. url.createObjectURL blob creates a special link to our JSON blob. Link.download makes the browser download it as a file named whatever you wish. You can add a variable to the name, like a date, username, or a project name. And finally, link.click simulates a click, so the download starts instantly. Now we can move to the fun part and build our UI for the new function. We need to bind our export canvas function to a UI element like a button. Upon button click, it runs export canvas and downloads the file. Let's switch to our main app.js component and import the newly created export file.js component accordingly. I will create a top navbar element that will display our buttons. We will place it above the canvas using position fixed in CSS. You can style it however you like it. But in our example, let's build a nice top navigation bar. Let's see our preview. Now you can find a new button in the top left corner. Let's add a few shapes so we can test the export. As you can see, we successfully exported the canvas. We can see all the shapes by the type, like rect rectangle, with all their visual properties such as placement and color. Let's go back to our export file component and now create the upload function so we can restore the canvas from a JSON file. We'll start by defining a new function, handle file upload. This function will run whenever someone selects a file from the file picker. Next, we define the file constant which is the first file the user picked. Now we need to check if the file that was uploaded is a JSON. If not, reject it. Create a file reader object, so we can read the file's contents. When the file is finished loading, we parse the results from JSON first. Reader.result contains the raw JSON text from the file, and the JSON.parse turns the text back into an object. Then we clear, remove everything that is currently on the canvas. Now we need to tell Fabric.js to rebuild the canvas from the saved JSON data. If the JSON is broken, catch the error and log it. Now we can start reading the file contents as plain text. In case the file wasn't JSON, show an alert to the user. 
Now we need to bind our restore function to an input in the UI. Accept JSON only allow JSON files. And on change handle file upload, handle when a user selects a file. Ok, let's go back to the app preview and try to test the upload function. As you can see, we were able to restore all objects from JSON in our Fabric.js Canvas application. However, you will see that our file is missing the previously extended properties like custom IDs, style ID from our style picker and similar. If you want to see how to extend properties, please check the previous video. Unfortunately, Fabric.js does not handle extended properties by default. We need to go back to our app.js file and do it manually by creating a new constant, let's say extend object with custom properties. Whenever a new object is added to the canvas, we give it some extra fields. For example, style ID lets us link the object to a design style, default is null. Set index, a custom stacking order, default is zero. ID, a unique identifier. If one does not exist already, we create one with the current timestamp. Now, here's the important part. Fabric.js has a method called toObject that controls what gets exported when we save the canvas. We grab the original version of that method, then wrap it. Inside our custom version, we tell Fabric something like Whenever you serialize this object, make sure you also include style ID, Z index, and ID in the JSON. That way, when we save and later reload the canvas, those properties don't get lost. And finally, in our use effect, whenever a new object is added to the canvas, like when you draw a rectangle or paste something in, we immediately call extend object with custom props. That ensures every object gets our custom fields as soon as it appears. Let's give it a try. I will add a few shapes to the canvas and apply custom color styles that assign style ID to reference colors from styles. We will export the canvas as JSON and check the file. As you can see, now our JSON export has custom object properties like style ID. Now, when I restore the design from JSON into the canvas, I will try to change the color value for existing styles and see if it impacts our design right away. As you can see, it works as we designed. And that's it for today's video. You've learned how to export your Fabric.js canvas to JSON, restore it from a file, and make sure your custom logic like extended object properties do not get lost. If you liked that video, Leave a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.